Hello. In this video, I'm going to start uh, talking about the acidic cleavage of ethers. This is the primary type of reaction that ethers undergo. Um, at the beginning of this sequence on the synthesis and reactions of ethers, uh, I shared that most ethers are fairly unreactive compounds, and this is basically one of the few things they can, they can do. I'm going to start this video off by talking about uh, how the reaction works on a simple ether. We're going to move on in the next video to talk about predicting the products when the ethers are not so simple in structure. Uh, and then uh, on to some limitations and other issues. And then finally, uh, a wrap up video sharing some other ways maybe that some ethers can be cleaved. So uh, the way that this reaction works, and you have an ether, and I'm going to use diethyl ether as my example, uh, and initially uh, I'm going to talk about excess hydrogen bromide. And this reaction produces uh, two equivalents of bromoethane as its products. Let's draw a mechanism for this and see how it works and see why... Uh, See why we require more than one equivalent of, of HBr. We actually require two, though uh, it sometimes is a convention that we follow to write excess just so that we guarantee that we have enough. Okay, so the first step of this mechanism is a proton transfer step. The oxygen in the ether is relatively basic, at least in, in under these circumstances and can pick up a proton from HBr. So now we have our protonated ether and I'm gonna stick around, put in my bromide, bromide anion, because we're gonna need it. And these bromide, bromine atoms in the, the product molecules need to come from somewhere. Well, now we have something on here that looks like an activated leaving group. So we've set up the, the good conditions for a substitution reaction. And in this particular case, we have a primary substrate and a good leaving group. Uh, our substitution occurs through an SN2 type reaction. Now I have one equivalent of bromoethane and one equivalent of ethanol. And very likely you've already talked about the substitution reactions of ethanol or, or of alcohols in general and know that alcohols tend to undergo addition reactions. Ooh, what did I do? tend to undergo, uh, I'm sorry, tend to undergo substitution reactions with the, the concentrated acids. And so ethanol can, can likewise pick up a proton from HBr. And then likewise, we can have uh, an activated leaving group Actually, let's just get rid of that. And uh, a bromide anion nucleophile that can, can produce the other equivalents, the other equivalent of bromoethane. So let's see, here are my two equivalents of bromoethane formed. It's, and we need uh, at least two equivalents of hydrogen bromide to make this reaction work. I'm going to do one more example uh, using methyl tert-butyl ether. I just wanted to highlight that the mechanism changes a little bit. The outcome does not change, but the mechanism changes a little, a little bit when uh, one of the alkyl groups is more substituted. Oh. I am getting myself in trouble. I not paying attention to what I'm doing. The initial steps of this mechanism are going to be the same. We have a proton transfer from hydrogen bromide to the to the ether oxygen that makes something that has an activated leaving group. And 
uh, the difference then becomes uh, what happens next. What happens next is because I have a tertiary group over here, instead of the, the sub subsequent reaction occurring through an SN2 type pathway, we can get uh, fragmentation here to form the, the molecule of methanol. And uh, a tert butyl cation. And it's going to be that tert butyl cation that goes on and reacts with the bromide anion. Now, a more, a more SN, now not a more SN1, but actually straight up SN1 reaction to make the tert butyl bromide. And then we can have, uh, just as we did. Uh, in the previous example, our methanol can pick up an extra proton. Now we have a good leaving group. We have that bromide anion. We have that bromide anion. And we can get an, now, now because of this is a methyl substrate, we have to get a, an SN2 reaction here but at least we can you know, see the differences. So two different possible mechanisms. SN2 all the way, if we have primary methyl, low substituted uh, hydrocarbons on, on either side. Uh, SN1 can occur for secondary and tertiary groups on, on one or both sides of the ether. In the next video, we're going to uh, talk about how we can determine what products might form from these kinds of reactions uh, and then and some of the, the different types of limitations that might occur. Uh, and then we'll wrap up by follow or by talking about other ways to cleave certain kinds of ethers that maybe avoid strong concentrated acid. Thank you for watching.